Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Changed my life, giving it all to the only son who gave me hope when I had none. So let the praises ring. Oh, let the praises I'm giving ring. my life to the only one who makes the moon reflect the sun. Every starry night that was his design. I'm giving my life to the only son who was and is and yet to come. Sing that he is heavenly.
Good morning, church. I just want to encourage you to find a seat, or if you're at home, find a couch. I just want to thank you for joining us this morning on this uh, Thanksgiving worship service. Um, and wherever you are, whether you're home or you're here with us, I just want to encourage you as we begin our singing time that you would, that you would sing in whatever language is most comfortable for, to you. Okay, and to start us off in our, in our worship, I just want to read out of Psalm 95, and then uh, Sherry is going to help me. Psalm 95, 1 and 2 says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. 诗篇九十五章一到二节，来啊，我们要向耶和华歌唱，向拯救我们的磐石欢呼。我们要来感谢他，用诗歌向他欢呼。Stand with us to worship together. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Why my soul praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. Now to His temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration.
Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, I stand. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I want to welcome all of you that are in this church to worship with us in person. It is a special, special day. All three congregations are here to worship God in person. This is God's grace. I I also want to welcome those of you are online, and uh, we love to have you together. Uh, come join us here one day when God allowed us. We also welcome you to join us online, and we love to have you together. Come join us here one day when God allowed us. We also want to welcome those of you are online, we want to thank you for this special day. On this special year, Lord, we want to count your blessing. Father, we want to thank you for your protection, your provision, and your grace and your mercy on all of us. Lord, today we can come together to worship you in person. This is pure grace. Lord, we want to thank you. 
We want to count the blessing, every single one of them that you gave us. Lord, we just want to come to you in humbleness. Oh, Lord, forgive our sins. Forgive our transgressions. Lord, a lot of time we take it for granted that all the blessing should be given to us. Oh, Lord, your own word said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and repent from their own wicked way, and I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and will heal the land. Oh, Father, we come to you in humbleness, ask that you will forgive our sins, forgive our transgressions. Lord, we ask that you will come and heal this land. Lord, we pray that you will take this pandemic away so that we, our brothers and sisters can come together some form of a normal uh, life that we can worship you. Oh, Lord, we also pray that you will bless us. Help us to live our life uh, in, in faith in you. No matter the environment, Lord, we come to you in humbleness. Lord, I also want to thank you for blessing our church, our brothers and sisters. Uh, looking back this year, it was your blessing that you continue to guide us. Lord, we want to thank you for leading us through this transition. Lord, lead us from transition into transformation. Help the church, help every one of us here that we will live a life that will glorify your own name. Lord, we pray for the staff, pray for the leadership in this church, pray for the brother and sisters, every single one of us. Lord, give us a clarity of your guidance. Give us a clarity in the vision and the mission so that we can live a life that will glorify your name, be the light and salt of the city of everywhere that we live. Oh, Lord, today, again, we thank you for this special, special occasion that we can come together. Lord, I ask that you bless us, whether we sing praises to you, we'll read your word, or we listen to uh, Pastor Oleg's message. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide him and bless him, and also help uh, Andrew to do a good job in translation. Lord, again, we come to you in humbleness and give you thanks. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, friends. Hey, this way, this way. I turn around. Today is a special day as Chinese Baptist Church will be observing believers' baptism. This is Brother Andy Tran. Andy has started coming to CBC through a witness of one of his friends, and she is here in the audience. Uh, she's a believer. And as Andy started coming to CBC on occasion a couple years ago, um, uh, God began to talk his heart, and he began to ask questions. We began to answer, to visit, to pray for him. And about a year and a half ago, Andy trusted the Lord to be his Savior, to be his Redeemer, to be his Lord and God uh, in the Starbucks coffee place. Uh, Andy wanted to be baptized around Easter, but as you know, the pandemic started to happen, and we had to shut everything down. And this morning, Andy is willing and is making this public statement that he has been identified with Christ Jesus, that he has already been united in Christ Jesus, that he has trusted that Jesus Christ is his Lord and Savior, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Son of Man, who died on the cross and rose again to make him right with God. He has already become a child of God. Andy understands that baptism doesn't save him. Andy understands that baptism is his public identification and testimony of what already had taken place in his heart. He had already been born again and regenerated through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And today, Andy would like to make that statement. So Andy, I just wanted to ask you a couple questions, brother. Are you ready? Hold on, not yet. <laughs> He's nervous. He's anxious. <laughs> I told him, hold your nose. No. Brother Andy, you know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that he is the Son of God, the Son of Man, who died on the cross for your sin and rose again? Yes. Amen. 
and Brother Andy, based upon your profession and who Christ is, that you have believed and trusted in the good news of God's Son, Jesus the Christ, that He gave His life for you, that He rose again, that He has forgiven you of all sin. I now baptize you, dear brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, hold. Mm -hmm. All the way. Hold it like this and all the way. Okay, one, two, three. Amen. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. And what a great way to start us off in our Thanksgiving worship. Why don't we stand as we continue to worship through song? Sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God. standing as we hear from God's word.
Good morning, church. Uh, today's scripture reading will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 9, and I'll be reading in the ESV version. The word of the Lord says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech in all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yan 祂也必坚固你们到底,叫你们在我们主基督耶稣的日子无可责备,神是信实的,你们原是祂所召,好与祂儿子我们的主耶稣基督一同得份。May God bless the being of his word, you may be seated. Happy Thanksgiving, dear friends, dear guests, brothers and sisters, church family. In the midst of this unusual year, Christians and CBC members, we have much to be thankful to our Lord for. Many families are choosing not to celebrate this holiday as they used to for obvious reasons. Uh, for those of you who are still wondering, and the answer is no, we will not have any Thanksgiving potluck or fellowship or lunch or any kind of get togethers here on this campus in person. We will also not be able to serve and provide and serve our city as we used to in the past especially those who are homeless, those who are marginalized, uh, those who are in much need. Yet, as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, we ought to be the most thankful people in this world. No matter what is happening, in our world, in our society, our gratitude must be different because it rests in giving thanks towards God. Today's Bible passage describes God as faithful. If you have a Bible, so let it be projected on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. We will actually start with verse 9, and in verse 9, the last verse of this passage, it's a separate sentence, and it says, God is faithful. God is trustworthy, same word. By whom you Christians we're called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And this is where we start today's message of being thankful to God, but being thankful to God for His grace. So how did God the Father do that by 
giving us grace by bringing us into the fellowship with His Son. And as we've witnessed a few moments ago, Andy Tran, he trusted and believed and received God's grace by faith in Christ. And for that, we give thanks to God. But what does it mean that God is trustworthy and that we've been called into a fellowship with His Son? I believe that no matter what you and I or our church or Christians are going through, understanding God and His character will help us to be thankful to Him. So let's look in our text, verse 4. First, we're thankful for His grace because Christ saved us. Verse 4 says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. Remember, this is a letter to the believers to the church in Corinth written by Apostle Paul. And in that church, they started to confuse what it means to be saved and forgiven in Christ. And how do you continue to live as a Christian within the context of a local church? During Thanksgiving, you're welcome to go ahead and read the rest of the First Corinthians. Just don't get too depressed. I'd like for you to focus on these first few verses that we are thankful to God for Christ saved us. So he says here, because of the grace that God, that because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, meaning God gave that grace, that favor and kindness to you and me. It is God who took the initiative and granted us His undeserved kindness. That's another word for grace, kindness of God. It is God the Father who is the hero. It is Him that does the work. That word grace, it means that God is always leaning toward His people. God is always extending His kindness towards the people. It is in God's nature for He is loving and faithful that He is disposed to bless His special creation, humanity. And for that, Paul was reminding Corinthians that Christ saved you, and for that you are to be thankful for. Now, how did he save them? If you have a Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, it's a summary of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4 say this. Paul, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in according with the scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, this is the good news of the gospel. That we have received His grace, and that grace consists of 
the Son of God dying on the cross for the sins and for the penalty of those who will trust in Him. And that gift is open to anyone. If you're here for the first time, if you're here on occasion, and if you have not been assured that you are in a fellowship with God Himself, today you have a chance to be assured. Also, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, Paul describes it in this way how Christ saves us. Ephesians 2 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, sins, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. Grace is the ongoing fuel for our communion with the living God and the creator of this universe. Grace in the life of a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ is what reminds us and what guides us to be thankful to him every day. So we learn from this verse how we are in fellowship with God's Son is that Christ saved us, but secondly, that Christ enriched us. Let's continue in verse five of today's passage, and it says this, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge. Enrich meaning causing to abound or made wealthy. It's a very rare word, only appears three times. It means causing to abound or become wealthy. So Paul reminded this. Christians in Corinth of the privileges that are theirs in Christ Jesus. Remember, Corinth was one of the capital provinces of Eastern Mediterranean of the Roman Empire. They were wealthy, they were famous, they were academicians, many of them. And the Corinthian church was known as the most gifted, at, most gifted church at that time, if you compare other churches in the New Testament. Corinthians was considered one of the most gifted and talented. But unfortunately, as these early Christians, these new Christians, as, as they were saved by Christ, they still had their old thinking. These Corinthian Christians, they placed their confidence in certain personalities within their church. One of them was Apollos, and he was a great orator, speaker. So some of them were almost like worshiping Apollos. Some of them were looking up so much to a philosopher or someone who was very knowledgeable in that city, and they were almost idolizing and worshiping him. And even with that church, they oftentimes depended on their own abilities, and they overlooked God's grace in Christ Jesus. They forgot that when they have been saved and forgiven in Christ, that God blessed them with every spiritual gift for building up of the local church. In fact, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, 
speaks about being enriched in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So that word there, in all speech and all knowledge, in all speaking, means that God blessed them as the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is a supernatural manifestation of God's power for everyone who is a Christian. And that Christ enriched them in all knowledge, meaning that now God the Father revealed this good news of Jesus Christ to them, and that is the truth, and that is how you are saved not by some kind of special knowledge of being a philosopher. When Christians, when you and I are called into fellowship with the living God, we receive all that is needed for the work of the local church ministry and for us as a Christian, to live as a Christian. Second Corinthians 8, 7 also says this, But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace-giving. Second Corinthians 8, 7. In the same book, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says this, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And in the same chapter, verse 11, 2 Corinthians 9, 11, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Brothers and sisters, Chinese Baptist Church family, let us give thanks to our God, to our Heavenly Father. For He saved us in Christ Jesus. And it is not because we are good or because we've earned His favor and salvation. He saved us by grace through faith. And let us give thanks to God the Father for His grace that after He saved us, He also enriched us in every way. And although in 2020, Chinese Baptist Church, as a corporate body, did not accomplish as many in-person ministries that we planned for, but our members, our brothers and sisters of this church spread out around the whole city and put their spiritual gifts and their talents and their time into practice. Too many times we do not see behind the scene work. We do not see how brothers and sisters and you serving and ministering to those who are in need, touching their lives, praying for them, bringing them food, helping them repair their home. For that, we give thanks to God 
for His grace. He saved us, He enriched us in every way in Christ Jesus. And then we continue, we'll jump to verse 8. So He saved us, He enriched us, and thirdly, Christ, He is keeping us until the day of the Lord. Verse 8, Who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ? Guiltless is also blameless, without any blame or uh, without any blemish. Brothers and sisters, we receive God's grace, not just at the point of time when we are saved and forgiven. But we need God's favor and God's kindness to the very end, the rest of our earthly Christian life. It says here that God's grace in Christ will keep us guiltless, blameless, till Christ's coming for his church. That's what it means, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ is when Christ will return for us, for his people. And that day will come. Do not be mistaken. Do not get too comfortable here. Our citizenship is ultimately in heaven, and that day will come. So we are waiting for the day of the Lord. And because we are in the fellowship with His Son, by being saved and enriched in Him, Christ will also keep us until that day. You see, God grants us His favor and kindness, and believers are assured of His kindness from past, present, and future. A lot of Christians, a lot of new Christians, especially like Andy, after a certain time, they will feel like, oh, I'm not living, I'm not behaving a certain way. Is Christ still in me? Am I still a Christian? The Bible is very clear that when we are saved, when we are forgiven, God's Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and dwells in us forever. And it is God's kindness that will keep us guiltless, meaning all sins have been forgiven from past, present, and future until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now when, as a Christian, you, you, you become weak and you live in the flesh, meaning according to your selfish and me, me kind of desires, yes, you need to repent and turn away and come back to the cross and to the grace of Christ and be reminded of who you are and whose child you are. But it doesn't mean that, hey, I lost my salvation. I do not have my eternal life. I'm not forgiving. I'm not assured that I'm in Christ's presence. The Bible is very clear. He who has the Son has eternal life. 1 John 5. He who has the Son has eternal life. Also in Ephesians chapter 5, 26 and 27, we hear these words of assurance. Ephesians 5, 26 and 27. That he, Christ, might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, her meaning the church, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, 
that she might be holy and without blemish. 约翰所书第五章二十六二十七节话俾我哋听，神用水藉着道把教会洗干净，使佢成为圣洁，将自己献可以献上自己做荣耀嘅教会，毫无沾污，毫无皱纹嘅缺陷。Brothers and sisters, if you're here and you're not assured or you're doubting. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, and be reminded that He, in His grace, will sustain you and keep you guiltless until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. 或者你今日有疑问，或者自己唔系好清楚，你要靠住神嘅话语话俾你听，神会同我哋一齐，直到佢嚟嘅日子，使我哋冇沾污，冇瑕疵。And for that, we ought to be thankful to God for His grace. Amen. So as we enter this season of Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, 当我哋进入感恩节同埋圣诞嘅季节嘅时间 ，we may be separated from each other due to the pandemic and restrictions and safety. 所以因为而家嘅情形，所以唔能够面对面见面。We cannot enjoy family and church gatherings. We cannot enjoy those family reunions and potlucks that we are accustomed to. 唔能夠家人見面，亦唔話教會一齊嘅聚餐。Let us continue on nourishing our hearts and our attitudes to give thanks to our loving and compassionate and merciful God for His grace in Christ。但係我哋應喺神嘅面前，睇我哋自己感謝神俾我哋一年當中無限嘅恩典。As CBC presses forward for the glory of God into 2021 and beyond。同我哋開始明年或者以後嘅時間，我哋教會向前走嘅時候 ，We as Christians, we as the body of Christ, we possess this good news of God's grace. We have this jewel in our, in us. 我哋有神嘅恩典喺我哋心中，我哋清楚明白，我哋係得救嘅人。Let us not overlook this opportunity. 讓我哋珍惜我哋前面嘅機會。That was given to us by God to tell of this wonderful gospel to people around us. This is God giving us a commission to tell the good news to the world. When the pandemic started in March, we closed everything down. Everything was quiet. No one was here, and we were hoping that hey, by summertime we can still come back and like have the church family here. 我哋所有嘅活動都停止，但係今朝晨今日我哋就見到好多人一齊。Of course, that did not happen。我哋唔知發生咩事。But in May around Mother's Day weekend， 今年母親節嘅時間 ，God gave my family an opportunity to build this relationship with our Muslim neighbors。神俾我哋有個特別嘅恩典，就係、是、我哋同我哋隔離嘅誒信伊斯蘭教嘅人有個特別嘅團契。A few days after we met and we've known about them, we said hello to them a few times. We had a few conversations here and there. 我哋都認識佢一段嘅時間㗎，同佢講過嘢，傾過偈。But a few days later, they Showed hospitality to my family and invited us for dinner to enjoy a delicious Middle Eastern meal. 过咗几日之后，突然间佢哋邀请我哋一家人去屋企度享受中东嘅晚餐。And since late May until this day, we've been having these meals with them almost every Saturday evening. 喺五月开始，差唔多每个礼拜六晚，我哋都一齐嘅食饭。We were not looking for an opportunity, but God brought us to this opportunity. This opportunity is God's opportunity to bring us together, to bring us together, to bring us together. Now we realize that during this pandemic, people were scared, people were hopeless, people were anxious, and people were even more open to socialize with your neighbors and friends and coworkers. So we know that during this time, many people in the world have a lot of anxiety. So during this time, they have. 更多嘅將佢哋打開佢哋心門，同自己鄰居來往。So this family, they know we're Christians. They know where we attend church. I think they know that I'm a minister. I teach Bible. 
呢個家庭都知道我係基督徒，亦係教會度誒侍奉。We respect them. We respect their belief. We do not argue. We do not debate between Islam and Christianity. When the questions do arise, we have a. <coughs> this is what the Bible teaches. This is what Quran teaches, and that's fine. 咁講到信仰嘅時間，佢有佢哋嘅誒讀嘅嘢，我有自己讀嘅聖經。But especially during this Thanksgiving and Christmas season. Brothers and sisters, God is preparing people around you, people around your circle of influence. In this special time, God has given us a special opportunity to meet many people. To experience this grace and this goodness of God that comes through grace-filled, spirit-filled believers. We are going to share God's grace with other people and invite them to God's presence. Brothers and sisters, let us not take this opportunity for granted to tell other people during this holiday season of what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. We must not take for granted what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. Now, some of you may ask a question: How do I do that? Some of you may ask a question: How do I do that? Tell them in your own words what we've just studied from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 to 9. You can simply say, "Tell them in your own words what we've just studied from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 to 9." You can simply say when they ask you, "What are you thankful for?" You can simply say, "Let me tell you what I'm thankful for." I'm thankful to God for His grace because Christ saved me, because Christ made me rich in Christ Jesus. You can simply say, "Let me tell you what I'm thankful for." I'm thankful to God for His grace because Christ saved me, because Christ made me rich in Christ Jesus. You can simply say, "Let me tell you what I'm thankful for." I'm thankful to God for His grace because Christ saved me, because Christ made me rich in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. 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 Let us pray.
Would you rise with us as we sing this last song in unity and truth? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the you guys join me in prayer as we conclude our service. Um, again, church, uh, of all people, Christians of all people, we should be the ones who have the most to be thankful for, not only because of the Son uh, who has indwelled, uh, who's given the Spirit to indwell in us, uh, but during this week we have um, a family, uh, resources, the ability to praise and to be in community. And so church, as you go off this week, uh, be the ones who are the most thankful. So let's pray and conclude our service. Father God, we give you thanks for today. We thank you that uh, in your mercy uh, and in your love, you have allowed us to worship, uh, to uh, hear from you. And so God, as we leave this place now, as we depart from this sanctuary and as we sign off online, uh, may we reflect the goodness and the grace and the wisdom that you have given us. Uh, may we understand the beauty of the gospel and use that as a testimony for how good you are. And so, Father God, would you allow us to be your representatives um, this week um, as we are your people. It, it's in the name of Jesus the Son. Amen. Amen. Uh, before you guys are dismissed, we have a, you guys can take a seat real quick. I'm going to have the, uh, our VTF team come in and give you instructions for um, how to dismiss. Sorry, before they come up. Uh, we have a, a children's package in the foyer. Uh, if you have a family with young children or old children or just children, um, as you guys are dismissed, uh, go ahead and grab a little packet. You'll see it on the table. The ushers will uh, show you where it's at. And so uh, if the VTF team would come up and dismiss us. <laughs>